and welcome to today's webinar um, with Tharson and Infigo. So uh, I'm Warren Fivash, I'm your host for today. I'm from Infigo. Um, just firstly, thank you for joining us all today. Um, we really appreciate you joining and we hope you get a lot out of today's webinar. Um, we've got some great topics coming up. We've um, been learning, we've got um, lots of knowledge we want to share with you that we've been gathering over the last few months. Um, and we've got five big topics that we're going to talk through with you uh, during the course of this next 45 minutes. So uh, we'll, we'll get cracking shortly. I'll introduce you to, um, I'll introduce you to our my two colleagues who will go through those five topics with you. Um, just before we get started, I just wanted to, to, to speak about um, making this really interactive today, this webinar. We've got some exciting stuff coming up and we want you guys to be part of it. Um, our experts will talk you through that in a second. We want, we're going to launch some polls. We've got a live chat and we've got a live Q&A at the end of today. Um, firstly, just before we get started, we just want to make sure you can all hear us properly. Um, so we're just going to launch a quick poll just to see if you can hear us okay. If you could just click yes or no to that. Just so we know you can hear the expert advice from us. Yeah, just waiting for that to come through. So today I've just mentioned that our two experts in the building are John Murphy, technical pre-sales consultant with Tharston. He'll be chatting to you in a second. We've got Douglas Gibson, uh, managing director of Infigo Software. Um, and guys, I just want you to briefly explain both about your businesses. So we go to John first. So hello everybody. Yeah, so um, I've been working with Tharston now for about two to three years. Um, just a little bit about Tharston really. We're a UK based uh, company based up uh, near Burnley, up in the, uh, the northwest. Um, we have about 70 staff uh, in total. Uh, we have offices in the UK, US, Australasia. And uh, we have about 700 customers, which have the majority of them in the UK, which represent about 7,000 end users. And we pride ourselves on a, a high uh, renewal rate, 96% renewal rate, which we believe to be extremely high. So I'll just hand you over to Doug now. Hi guys, thanks very much for joining today. Um, Douglas Gibson, MD of Infigo Software. Um, I think you're gonna be enjoying um, some of the topics we have today. Um, and before I just give you a little bit about um, Infigo Software. Um, our specialism is it within the web to print arena um, and the print e-commerce. Um, we um, have around 40 plus employees spread across um, three offices, um, predominantly out of the UK. Um, USA and some some coverage in Eastern Europe as well with experience of managing over 1500 plus websites across the globe um, and between myself and John today we've got some exciting knowledge and, and stuff to share um, really are servicing a, a global audience um, for across the business we pride ourselves in working with the best of breed partners um, that's why the only person I could have at my side today is John. He, he really is a, a fountain of knowledge, um, a very lovely gentleman to have alongside us, and um, he, he cracks the odd really bad joke. So I'll apologize for those in, uh, in advance. We also work with some great partners as well as Tharsons, such as Infocus, SmartStream, and a lot of other good businesses um, across the globe that really add some value to our core proposition. So why are we here today? What are we talking about? Well, over my journey over the last sort of six to 12 months and speaking with John um, over the last few days is we're, we're, we're moving forward into this um, modern day um, drive where we're dealing with people that are, are using their devices, their interfaces, um, where they need 24-7 um, instant feedback. Um, we, we, we're looking at this as the Uberization of print. We really are driving that interaction with our customers. And that really is fueling some of our um, discussions today. No longer can we deliver simple information. We really have to make sure it's turned on, it looks good, and is driven in a really pasty manner. 
So the topics that we're going to focus on today are really what we believe encompassing um, that information. Um, we're going to be looking at um, storefronts, interfaces, integration, automation, and speed. And we'll touch on those subjects a little bit more detail as we pass um, through the se session. I'm just going to um, kick up a, a little um, poll question to see what's important within your business um, at the moment and what are the key things that are driving some of your information requests. Wow, fast and furious coming in here. Awesome interaction, guys. And if I could vote, vote in the poll, but the system won't let me, um, I'm a little bit biased, but I think storefronts are really important. <laughs> uh, but that's just my slightly biased opinion, as well as automation, integration, and speed. So storefronts. Um, I, I often get the, uh, asked the question wherever I go, what, what, what are we talking about? What are we doing? Um, how do I interface with my customers? How do I speak to them? Um, and many, many sort of months and years ago, we, a storefront would be classed as a um, single login and it would be very mundane. We'd drive through template and often we'd speak to people, oh, well, I don't do that type of work to have a storefront. Well, the evolution of the storefront is amazing. Now we're looking at a 24-7 front end to your business. That will include estimating. That will include uploading and pre-flighting. That will include editing, live previews, pricing that is delivered, two-way automation with communication within your business. It really is moving on from that very simplistic view of templating. And not only is this information ultra important, quick, and the de demands of our customers pushing that to the, to the nth degree, it's got to look amazing. It's got to be on brand. It's got to be powerful. The people that are using these systems are wanting it to be easy, they want it to look great, and they want it to be a fantastic experience. So that leads me on to, 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 to uh, another question, interfaces. One of the big topics that's coming up into um, my, um, my, my sort of um, questions when I'm out with customers is, well, I have all this information coming in. And really, um, the, the, there's different ways that we can um, receive that input. And I think the important thing is, is setting up about what your interfaces are with your customer. And whether that's receiving an XML file in a hot folder, whether that's receiving files from an FTP, the important thing is we need to standardize those interfaces. But also as, uh, when we standardize those interfaces, we need to make sure that they're focused and delivered for that customer and that type of job. It can't just be, well, I've got a storefront, I'll chuck a product on there. It has to be delivered in a manner that the user is going to be using that product and handling those files. So we're gonna um, push out um, a, a, a quick pool. Um, and the question really is um, around do you currently brand? Do you spend that time with your storefronts for your customers? Very interesting so far. And a point here that is coming in, that over half of you guys are currently not, um, not looking at that um branded um requirement which is, is is very very interesting um what i'd like to do um is just take you through some of the questions around the interfaces um and what some of the questions are so today we're going to have a, a quick look at um one of our catfish um systems and here we are with our startup web to print product. We can have a look round, and it's been designed um, for my particular use. So I've got my products and things like that. But now the customers are demanding um, a lot more. Customers are really wanting us, based on a um, simple login, to be able to manage with complete fluidity the difference and the flexibility of the design. 
and we can see here I've just logged in um, and I've now got the option to drive both color, content, information around what has been configured for the customer. And that is completely flexible. That can be based on a user login. That can be based on a um, selection of which department they're in. It's very, very flexible and powerful. And it could be even be within the Tharston um, arena. We could do different pricing based on who's logged in. And I'm just going to quickly log in as another user and give you a sample of a slightly different um, look and feel. And we really see the power of this being driven on the fly. Um, and the more and more customers we deal with want that information in a, a single storefront, but can actually be flexible to manage, but driven to all of our, our customers. And I think the important thing, and one of the things that um, Infigo really prides itself on, is it's not just about that design that may be adjusting the logo. As you can see here with another example site, we've taken the whole interface. We've tailored it not just to the client's requirements, but we've tailored it to the product that the customer's actually ordering. It's extremely powerful. And ultimately what that does is that drives the consumer to order and converse in a quicker way. And we've got a number of different brands here, whether it be from um, Top Trumps, Crush Tag, and I'm just bringing up a slightly different product here, where we're looking at a completely different photo gift site. We're tailoring that interface. We're tailoring that storefront experience that is completely unique. And this is one of the things that we really pride ourselves on here at Infigo. We find that our catfish has got to be one of the most flexible products from an interface and storefront perspective on the market. So let's just have a, a quick login and have a look around and look at some of the, 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 the other options we have on the storefront. So as a user, as mentioned, I don't just want to find out what's going on with the information in the storefront, the content. I might actually want to check out where the job status is, a two-way information of what's going on. I might want to track where an order is. I might want to find the state of the job. And the important thing is all of that can be managed from a single storefront with a tailored interface from the client. I can reorder a product. I can get a status update. I can maybe pull out the delivery information, when it was shipped on, what time. But at all times, I'm communicating the customer through the storefront with a tailored experience. So how do I set this up? How do I manage it? So in our admin um, section, I'm going to go and have a look at some of the content. So in here, we have our editable areas on the site. I'm just going to search for my logo. So I'm going to take the header logo. And now, within that, rather than just assigning my single logo, I've now got different options to actually, based on these um, logins, so I've got sample one, two, and three, I use a new product from Catfish called Chameleon. And as the name suggests, we really can deliver that user interface that's different in every um, disguise. And if I hit the configuration option, not only can I change that content based on the department, the category, the product grouping, it could even be a URL. You're providing that complete tailored experience. And I can go into my customers. I can even map a user directly to that department. So I'm taking customer, um, customer content. I'm taking look and feel. I'm taking that whole journey and driving that tailored for that particular customer. And if need be, I can take my products and make my products and my options for my products totally flexible as well. And that is giving us complete control of content, look and feel, pricing in a single integration in a really provide well-rounded interface and something that is easy to use. So I'm just going to um, ask a, a quick question. Those guys, and which was over 50%, I was really surprised, are not configuring a storefront. Um, would you like more control? Would that be a big driver for you looking at? Are you feeling that your customers are driving that request at the moment?
very interesting feedback and we will be sharing all the feedback afterwards on the different questions and things like that so as well as my storefront making sure my interface is right that is only possible if i'm driving systems that are truly integrated systems that are easy to use and bring together we have a huge amount of information that sits in potentially disparate systems. The importance is not just that information working in an isolation, that we're bringing that information together in a completely integrated fashion. And I'm just going to hand over now to John. Hello, everyone. So um, what I'm going to do here is uh, we just have a quick poll before I'm going to start a live demonstration for you to show you integration. Wow, that's a proper even split there, I think. I don't think I've ever seen anything. It's like a, it's like a, we need a photo finish on that one, guys, but we'll feed back the results to you later on. It's very interesting. So, um, so I have a small demonstration here to talk to you a little bit about the integration that work that we have done uh, within Figo to the catfish product. And um, so I'm just going to run through it and we're going to start off in the extremely exciting and thrilling environment of uh, Thurston estimate product types. So, so estimate product types. So there's nothing as sexy as there is, is looking at the backbone of uh, an estimating product. So it's a good place to start. We're just gonna be going uphill as we go. So this is a, an, an estimate product type. This is a fundamental part of Thurston, a fundamental part about the way that we work and the way that we configure estimated solutions and you can see that it actually lends itself particularly well to hook it into a web to print solution in any way so this is for a simple flyer stroke leaflet in here what i can do is i can define some standard page sizes uh, i can tell it what the standard page size is or what the default is that it brings in and then i can specify some pre-setting data within each part of the estimate so of course this is only has a single part so in here, you can see that I could define the material. I could define whether it's a two page or a four pager. I can define everything. Um, but um, the beauty of that is, is that if we actually link a web to print portal in here and it picks the default option, then actually the default option is going to be the one that it follows unless it hears all to, uh, differently from us. So if you have a look here, you can see that I'm adding artwork processes to it. And I'm telling it that this may be manufactured either in a litho or a digital environment. I'm not specifying the machine, just the group that it's in. I can assign what finishing processes might be required. So on this part, I've kept it really simple. I've got embossing, I've got guillotining, I've got folding. Uh, don't have a great deal. Obviously, we could add a lot more. And then in here, I've defined that not only that it's litho and digital, but it's these presses within that litho and digital environment that actually could be used uh in the resultant uh estimate that we produce uh we define what the default colors are just set it up but it's a not a very exciting world but it is actually a, an extremely important one so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you us creating a manual estimate uh using that product type that we've just seen here so here comes the estimate all i need to do is to link to that estimating product type and what you should see is that those defaults that you saw have all come through automatically. And you can see there's two pages, A3, there's the folding scheme I used, there's the material I specified in there, and here are the finishing processes that we include in there. So the beauty of this is, is that actually, if I just key in a quantity on this particular job, i.e. how many I wanna do, so in this particular case, I wanna do 200. If I hit okay, our estimating logic will go and have a look at all of those available technologies, whether they're litho or whether they're digital, and will actually, select the one that is uh, is the, the the most appropriate to produce that job so not surprisingly for a 200 run it's come up with a solution that we produced this on a, a hp indigo or a 7800 machine however if i change the quantity from 200 up to 20,000, 
using the same estimate product type, you can see that it comes up with a completely different method of manufacture. Now the digital's out, we're now into the large LiFO environment, so it's picked an XL105. So that estimating engine is a fundamental part of why it's good to have uh, live estimating through us because you don't need to define the method of ma manufacture. Our estimating mechanism will do that for you. So to slightly sex it up a bit, what happens now is how do I link that estimate product type to a product within Catfish? So here you can see there's a, 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 a product here, 3D pizza with folding. Within here, there are obviously clearly lots of variables that are important within the catfish environment, I, the way that it looks, the way that it's going to behave when you actually interact with it. But what we have in here in this variables is the ability to connect that product directly to one of our estimates. So there is this option down there called MIS configure. If I select that, select the API connection that we've already established. And then what it does is it gives me a link to all of the published product types. Now, I'm linking this to an estimate. It doesn't need to be linked to an estimate at all. It could be linked to a template. I could be repeating the same product time and time again, but we're showing the interaction with our estimating at the moment for live estimating. So if I select our Infigo leaflet that you saw me that, that saw me working on earlier on, uh, get the product information, it draws in to the product variants, all of that stuff that we've seen in there. So you can see the design there, the packaging, the shipping, uh, the size of the pages, everything has been transferred through. So in here, I have the ability to override the defaults globally. So every time I pick this product, it will make these changes. So there you go, I picked a thing. I'd say, right, I always want to add an aspect of creative design. You could bring, bring that in. I could bring in packing. So I'm bringing that in. So I'm not making template after template after template. All I'm doing is making one estimated product type and using it again and again and again to come up with my defaults. So if you look down here, what we can see is that we've actually got some spot lamination and embossing and, and, and guillotining in here. Now, what I might want to do is actually not deal with them as a general rule. What I might want them to be is actually a variant within the product itself, within Catfish. So we'll deal with those and uh, add them uh, later on, and we'll show you how to do that. But right now, I'm setting up the default base uh, connection between our two products. So now that's done, close it. I now need to go to a different part of the uh, Catfish software and go and deal with the variants. So here they are. There are already a number of variants that are Catfish specific, but you can see that in this particular product, I've added two, embossing and spot UV varnishing. Very simple, just to make the point. And what I can do is I can go in and edit them and they have a choice that the customer has of either yes or no. So if I take the yes option, select again the API connection that we've already established, and now come down to here and I can say, right, so when the customer chooses the word yes, what is going to be the behavior within Tharston? So the within Tharston estimating. So I'll just double check that it was embossing, and it is. I come down here, enable embossing, and select the material that I want to use in that particular case. So if we just... If I close that and save that, then basically that will then uh, will have configured the product, and it's actually that product that I'll be showing you later on uh, in another demonstration. So I believe we just have another quick poll for you now. So uh, and before we carry on with the rest of the demonstration. Thanks for that, John. Really, really interesting. I think you can see there that that true integration that we're not just saying, right, we're going to chuck over an XML file and we'll get some information that will pass back and forth. We're live two way feeding back from two um, amazing systems and bringing the power and ultimately the power of those working together is, is, is pretty exciting. So the next thing we're going to look at is is what we call automation. And uh, along those lines, people are looking at automation of taking um, that 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 human aspect um, out of the um, out of the equation and and manual processes or in 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 efficient processes, ultimately to to reduce that admin that cost per job, um, and that's what we're ultra 
we're trying to do. But one thing we really want to talk about is that end-to-end -end automation, that panacea of not just chucking a file in a hot folder, but driving that through the process. And that's something now that John's just going to take you um, through in his, his Blue Peter style um, in a second. Um, and I think the importance of when we're looking at automation is a, a question that comes up time and time again, is speed. And I think the important thing I want to discuss today and, 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 and on my journey to shows and exhibitions and doing talks um, at the HP or Xerox guys is it's not just about the equipment speed. And uh, I think you guys will definitely, the first question that normally asks if you visit HP or Heidelberg or Xerox, how fast is the machine? And actually, the, the, the speed of the machine is never the issue. It's the, the speed of the entire process. And that process could be customer service dealing with the query. That speed could be um, information coming back from the delivery company about where the job is. And ultimately, we're having multiple touch points, multiple interactions. And we have to look at that speed. We have to see how we can draw that speed, that time issue down, how we can make it super quick. If we want to look at the Uberization of print, it has to be fast. Things have to communicate quicker. Things have to be fully intimate, um, automated. And that is a real power of, of looking at speed is not just um, the, the, the run speed of your machine and the make credit, but actually the, the, the power of um, driving that information together. So I'd like to ask, um, and we'll do um, this through a poll, what is the slowest process within your business? One second, guys, a little technical issue on the poll. In fact, we'll come back to that one in just a second. Um, I'll now hand over to John and we'll pick that up. A little technical issue with the webinar there. Back in two seconds and here's John. Okay, guys, so we're um, going to have a little look at speed. And as you say, not the actual performance of the particular printing machine, but the speed of getting an order through. So first things first, you saw earlier on that we configured a, 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 an Infigo product or Catfish product to link up with our estimate. And we just wanted to show you really how that works and the result of it at the end. So here you can see that simple product that we were looking with two options in it about spot uh um, spot uv and embossing these are the two variants that we put in it and here you can see that if i turn embossing on yes or no or change the quantity you can just see that it actually delivers a price here this 52 pound 97 and actually if i increase the quantity up to 20,000, as i did in my example earlier on that would be switching the method of manufacture from digital to conventional and delivering all that estimating power in there so once we've come up with our price then what we can do is we need to generate some artwork. So we're gonna have a quick journey into the wonderful world of mega edit. So again, uh, a, a module within Catfish, I think it's a module, isn't it, Doug? Yeah, it's a module within Catfish. Okay. Gives me the ability to actually generate my own art artwork. So in this case, we have a, an embossing layer. Obviously, we said there's embossing going on it, and I'm gonna personalize this, but I could be placing images now, resizing, recoloring things, treating it as if it was a desktop application online. And it's very easy to use. It would need to be for me to be able to use it. So next phase is once we've created our artwork is to then uh, confirm that order. So in a, normally in a demo environment, this is quite dreary. There seems to be a lot of clicking going on. Hitting OK, yeah, add to basket, put it in there, specify the delivery address, fire, fire, fire. But of course, this is vital information. And this information is not exclusive within the catfish environment. We're obviously having all of this delivered into Tharston as well so that we know what we're going to do at the end. And that's the important thing Doug mentioned it earlier on. It's not a question of dropping a PDF in a hot folder and having it do magical things. We need to drive the workflow with metadata all the way through the workflow. And the workflow includes getting it shipped, dispatched, get cost analysis on it, everything. So we've now hit it. It comes in and it's dynamically created an estimate within Tharston. Obviously, it was doing that at the point 
than we were doing this in the first place. So I'm just going to open it up and review it. You saw me manually creating an estimate. If I open this one up that's been created by Catfish, you can see there's no difference in the process, exactly the same as if you'd created it yourself. And here you can see the processes that we switched on and switched off. It's as if the operator sat in front of the machine and did it himself. Um, then what you can do is uh, once you've reviewed the estimate and you're happy with it, then the system, sorry, the estimate will be created. You don't need to review it. And then it will automatically be created from an estimate into a job. Again, just because you've hit the confirmation button. But we'll just have a quick look at that job. And of course, in here, it's got the customer information that we require, the delivery information we require, when everything needs to be done by. And obviously, this is going to be the landing pad later on for all our shop floor data collection coming back from our workflow. So the next phase really is to take the job out of the MIS and fire it into the workflow. So here you can see again, here's our Infigo job that's arrived here at the top. And if you just look over here on the right hand side, you can see that the JDF has been submitted and has actually we've had a confirmation that it's actually been sent to the digital environment. So if our quantity had been 20,000, it would have gone in to our Heidelberg Prenect environment, but it wasn't. It was for 45. So it's gone into our digital one. So Presetting workflow, vitally important. So what we've done is we've dynamically selected the appropriate HP ticket template over here. You can see this CMYK plus template. We've also gathered the PDF uh, content that we've been supplied, taken off the embossed layer, sent the four color layer down into the HP environment. And importantly, we've preset that HP job. So if you open it up here, you can see that the quantity has gone in. So that is not the final quantity. That is the quantity that the estimate believed that it needed, including any finishing processes that are being added afterwards, which is an important point. I mean, Catfish wouldn't know that information, but, but obviously because it's connected to our estimate and it does. So all of that then gets down. Is that the printing device? and then gets manufactured. So feedback is important. So we pride ourselves on feedback using JDF and JMF feedback. So here you can see that I've updated the milestones automatically on this job. So we know when the artwork arrived, we know when it printing started and when it printing finished. So obviously these milestones are useful from a scheduling and a tracking point of view. Uh, we also uh, have recorded the shop for data collection. Just because this job has come in automatically doesn't mean that we need to be any more or any less stringent than we would on a manual job coming in, even though there is no human intervention on it. So here you can see that the clicks have been recovered and the time that it's taken to manufacture that job. And of course, we don't want to keep that to ourselves. So uh, Doug was mentioning earlier on that your customer could have a, a portal online where they have a look at their jobs. And, and here you can see this job down here is showing a status that it's been shipped. If you just look down here, you can see it. And then in a minute, it will receive another confirmation from us that it's not shipped, that it's actually been delivered. And again, that's all part of the tracking, all part of what you need. And whatever status you require on there could be updated through our connection to each other. So it's a full integrated, fully embedded uh, uh, MIS workflow and web to print solution. So from the time we confirmed that job, until the time that it arrived at the press was under three minutes. And actually of that three minutes, about one minute and 25 seconds of it was actually the PDF file being downloaded from uh, the online solution. But that that obviously took time and, and obviously would always need to take time, but with smaller artwork, it'd be less, with larger artwork, it'd be more. So if we look here, we can see that we've created the PDF artwork dynamically. We've dynamically estimated the job using the, the estimate product types that we saw earlier on. We've created a, a job bag, which is gonna give works instructions and information to for all processes downstream, pre-press, press and post-press. The delivery note and delivery label hasn't been created, but all the data in there is there to be contained. Stock control, requisitions, purchase orders if required, all the information's there for that. And of course, importantly, we have the shop for data collection material usage and milestone updates coming through and being shared to all parties, all interested parties. So that's what we consider speed. It's not just a question of jucking a PDF file into there. It's actually looking at the processes in between the manufacturing stages. So I believe we're on a Q&A session now, is that right? So the poll that got stuck earlier, we're just going to quickly ask that, guys. So what would you say is the slowest process within your business? 
and which one would you like to take the time to improve and um, work on? And then what we're going to do um, is using the question system within um, the web um, WebEx, we're going to just put the floor out to you guys. We've already got a number of questions that are coming in um, about anything that we've talked about today. Obviously, there's lots of information that we've gone over. Um, we're happy at any point um, to take you through and discuss anything in more detail. Um, but uh, if you've got any questions, um, please feel free um, to ask them now. So I've got a couple of questions coming in um, thick and fast. So um, a question around the artwork. Um, how can I get artwork into the system? Well, that's a, that's a great question because ultimately, if we're talking about interfaces, it's, well, some customers don't need to log in. We can take artwork through an automated fashion um, using our API, um, which could then still drive that information directly into Tharstons. If a customer would like to log in, um, we could drive um, a PDF file that could be uploaded and submitted to the system. We can ensure that it's pre-flighted to the correct standards, um, making sure that all the selections have been um, driven in the correct way, and we can make sure that the artwork is submitted. So yeah, thanks for that fantastic question. Um, what other um, systems do, do, do we inter interface to? John's looking at me funny here, um, and EFI in particular. Um, well, uh, EFI have a number of systems, um, and I believe they, they are all slightly different depending on how you interface. Um, John's asking to leave the room. Uh, ultimately, um, we, we're using a generic MIS plugin that we have. Um, we can use something called a mapping table to take that data and ultimately um, import it or export it to, 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 to any system. Um, that, that we require. And we can either do that submitting an XML or JSON file, um, either through an FTP or through an API or through a, a simple hot folder. You're not going to get all the benefits of the true integration we're seeing here, but you will be able to drive information in and out of, 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 of other systems. So thank you very much um, to that. Um, question here for my lovely friend Asif. Um, great question as always. Um, We can, um, if questions on today, um, depending whether it's from the front end or the storefront, either of us give us a shout. Um, we're more than happy to to get, and I'll make sure that somebody gives you a shout afterwards um, to, to discuss that, um, no problems. Come other um, questions coming in here. So there's one, um, sorry, just about variable data. Um, so depending on what, there's different ways that we can consume variable data, whether it's through um, a, a CSV that's uploaded to the system, um, or you can use our um, API interface to submit the, um, the, the the data, then we can consume that. Um, or you could use hot folders to actually import um, the data, and we can use some scripting to, um, to take that um, information. So we've asked um, some questions around um, PDF. So um, we interface with um, something called Enfocus PDS and um, PDF Pit Stop Server. So that allows us to um, specify clear parameters um, when customers are uploading. So we can check anything that's available within the file in a true pre-flight manner. So I can check colors, media boxes, trim boxes. I can um, do some fixing and, and things like that. And I know John's got some um, bits to add on this as well. Yeah, so we um, also interface with the Focus switch. So we have a, a system in place at the moment that basically takes the PDF files and before they're submitted into uh, the prepress or digital workflow, we send them into Infocus Switch to be pre-qualified. So what we'll do is we look for the really the, the big three. So has the PDF file got the same colors as we have in our estimate? Have we got any sneaky spot colors peered in there? Have we got any different uh, uh, issues with page geometry? So are the page sizes are what we're expecting to see? Or do we have uh, the right to colors front and back. So is it double-sided, single-sided, or have we got the same amount of pages as we're anticipating? So all of these things go into switch. And what we have is because of our the way our interface works, we're particularly open, is that we actually enable in focus switch to actually edit the job. So if we find out that the page size is different and it's within 
estimating tolerance that will actually edit the job and submit it through. So that's another demonstration for another day, but it, it uh, is another way of dealing PDF content coming in. So a couple of other questions we've got. Um, can we use quoting software to create estimates outside of the storefront? Um, um, you can't use them, I guess, if you're pulling it directly from Tharsons, ultimately, yep, you can use the, the standard Tharson estimating engine. Um, if you want a lot of customers that we're working and de developing this technology for now um, are actually using this as a, a shop front for their internal customers. So their their account managers, the CSRs, um, and those guys to actually drive estimates in a much more simplified way rather than having to go into the, 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 the estimating um, department. Um, yeah. Absolutely, credit cards, um, shopping cart, all, all of that sort of stuff is supported from, from a front end. Um, and do we integrate with Planet Press? I'm not sure the question, so we'll maybe pick that up uh, offline. In terms, if that's from a workflow perspective, ultimately we can take um, we can take an XML file and we can take a, um, a PDF and drive it into pretty much any workflow. Um, so I don't see any issue there if it's in terms of driving some of the um, variable content, that might be a slight, slightly different question. So we're um, asking about the estimating. Um, yeah, ultimately, any any information um, that's been driven from the file can be used to make sure that the estimate's correctly. So if part of the parameters that has to be a particular format and set, then that can be driven from the user selection. Um, great question coming in here from a customer in the US. Um, can we drive um, the pricing um, from a single store for, um, from a single system? 100%. The whole idea of this is you're removing um, the requirement of second or third party systems managing different pricing. So Tharsum would be the source of truth, driving the, the, the JDF qualified estimate, and we will be pulling that live and interactive um so you're always dealing with the right pricing and you're not having to manage two different pricings um on 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 the system so i think that is just about all the time we have for questions and stuff guys we will make sure that all questions answered today and there have been um many and also all the feedback from the polls um, we'll get focused back in on and we really, really thank you for your time. It's been a well attended um, seminar and, and an overview today and we've enjoyed delivering the, the information and looking forward um, to, to, to meeting up with you guys and, and, and getting some, some more information out. So we, we'd like to thank you very much um, and yeah, let's let's drive that speed and efficiency and automation. Take care guys. Thank you.